was it was cold. The ship was pitching and rolling due to the roughness of the sea. About half past one, because I knew all the chefs on board, uh, the boss said to me, do you want to go down and make tea or coffee for everyone? So, which I replied I would. They'd just finished lunch, so there was no hot water available, so I put the hot water on and I stayed down there for about 20 minutes. So I went back up top about 10 to 2 and I was talking to the pilot on the starboard bridge wing then at approximately 2 o'clock we looked slightly to our, our, our right and then seen this fireball coming towards us. He immediately called the next set. The, uh, there was a broadcast then to say take cover. I took cover under an ammunition box. The missile came in. It was a thud, not an explosion, and a fireball came over the, uh, the ship. All the lads I'd been talking to in the galley were all dead by now. At first there was a little bit of panic, um, but then after a few seconds uh, we were called to an alarm aircraft procedure, which meant that you get onto the bearing ordered, and then open fire with what you've got. Uh, we couldn't see what we were firing at due to the smoke and uh, then we got told it was one of our own helicopters we were firing at. The training on that day was firefighting and because the missile had taken out our fire main we were unable to do the, the firefighting or the normal firefighting as, as we were trained for. The firefighting ended up with buckets of water over the ship's side on legs of string, sinking the buckets, getting the water and throwing it on. No sooner as you threw it on the ship's side, then it would dry immediately. HMS Yarmouth came down the starboard side, uh, HMS Arrow down our port side. They had their hoses going and they were boundary cooling the ship as much as possible. The heat was coming through the soles of your feet, your boots, and uh, it was getting impossible to get round the ship safely. Um, I remember rubbing my nose on the deck because that's where the least amount of smoke was. The last time I seen the captain, he was on the hangar roof, which was the emergency conning position of the ship once uh, the primary steering gear failed. Um, and. I don't think any captain wants to abandon his ship, so what felt like four or five hours, he eventually gave the order to abandon ship. The last I remember seeing of the Sheffield was just, as we pulled away, just smoking, bellowing of smoke all over the place. As the fires dwindled out, uh, the ship started listing in heavy swells to starboard had a 13 foot by 7 foot hole in it and uh, it was it was regarded unsafe to continue with the tow so uh, the ship was sunk um, I think it was between Fortland and South Georgia where she she now lies as a British war grave every day for the last 30 years um, I've thought about the incident and uh, within them 30 years there's been many times that I've suffered for survivor's guilt. Uh, why should I survive? Why should I be happy when people have lost their lives and uh, I've managed to live through mine? Uh, I have thought many times that people would be better off without me. The amount of grief I've caused um, family, friends. Uh, however, Recently, on a trip to the Falklands over the New Year period, uh, that guilt has some s subsided a little, uh, meeting the people down there. And I was able to visit most of the war memorials down there and be at ease, be at peace, uh, knowing that the war graves are looked after uh, immaculate condition. and. Uh, 
but to meet the people down there, for them to come up and shake your hand and say thank you for what you did 30 years ago, the most humbling experience I've ever been through.